the L3 Harris M914 Alpha, otherwise known as the 2376 minimum FOM L3 unfilmed white phosphor factory built PBS 14. These have most recently become available in the commercial market. They've been available for some time to the military and the law enforcement market. So with them being commercially available for resale, we wanted to do a brief overview of the unit itself, the kit that it comes with, and what we think of these systems. So when you're deciding what PBS 14 works best for your needs, you can make an informed decision. So starting first with the unit itself, the unit ships with a eye cup and a daylight filter on the unit. This is a standard mil-spec PBS 14 configuration, so you have your adjustable ocular lens. This is what's going to be adjusted to the prescription of your eye. It is a polymer mil-spec housing. You've got your on and off switch in the rear, which also controls your onboard illuminator. They are powered by a single AA battery, which as always, we always recommend to use lithium batteries and not alkaline batteries. You have a manual gain adjustment, which for those of you unfamiliar with manual gain, what this does is you can manually adjust the brightness of the image that you're seeing in your tube. And you've got your objective lens. This is an object, a standard PBS 14 objective lens, and this is what you use to focus your distance adjustment. So now that we've done a brief overview of the unit itself, we're gonna dive into the full kit and what it comes with. So first, this is the standard configuration that they ship with out of the kit. Like we said, you've got your eye cup, your daylight filter, and the, the daylight filter is retained with a shoelace. We recommend just cut that right off. That's snag hazard that you don't need, but it was a contract requirement, which is why they, why they ship with it. Then inside the kit, it's gonna ship in this green mil-spec PBS 14 bag. You have an alternate eye cup, which what this is for, which is pretty cool for those that do handheld applications. This goes right on the eye cup retaining ring. And what this is for is to shield any visible backsplash on the user's eye. So when you're hand holding this and you push this up against your eye, you notice that the inside opens up. So you get a view of the, of the lens. This is gonna give you a, um, a full view of through the tube. But when you're not using it, it seals off that, that light splash. So definitely a, a niche piece of kit, but it is useful for those that are gonna be handhelding and are worried about visible backsplash and signature on their face. It ships with a standard USGI weapon mount, a standard USGI J-arm, and a skull crusher. So looking at the kit itself and going into it really quick, the Skull Crusher is designed to use with a standard USGI bayonet style J-arm. We highly recommend, to, to be honest with you, to trash these three pieces of kit, and here's why. First off, the USGI J-arm is a bayonet mount. It's very flimsy. It's not as rugged as, say, a Wilcox J-arm, which we'll get into in a second. Um, they're just a cheap solution that honestly is not something that we trust to hang your expensive investment off, whether you're using this in really a, a pretty easy commercial environment or you're using this in a hard use mill environment the bayonet style j arm is just frankly not something that that we would recommend so that's going to go in the pile that we would recommend trash um, the skull crusher is really just kind of a cheaply made uh, skull crusher that it mounts it on your head but it's far from ideal especially with a, a high spec system like the m914 alpha so that's going to go in the in the trash pile and also the USGI weapon mount. So a lot of people don't realize, even though that PBS 14s are rated for 5.56 recoil, that was simply a contract requirement and they really aren't designed to be mounted on a weapon. So the reason why is when you get these high spec systems, the micro channel plate and the phosphor screen in the tube are very, very close together. And under recoil, those, those two components inside the tube can make contact in what you're going to see recoil damage, which is going to form in the a smudge in your tube and when you're looking through it. So the weapon mount recoil damage is not going to be something that L3 uh, warranties. It's not something that we can warranty. And because of that, we highly recommend to not use the weapon mount. So now that we've kind of dove into the kit, really from our opinion, you're buying this, although it comes with the kit, you're buying this for the unit itself. 
and some people like the bag, but the unit itself is a very high performing unit. So what's nice about these PVS 14s is they do ship standard with the 2376 minimum FOM that is an unfilmed white phosphor tube. And that is the same tube that it comes standard in the PVS 31 alphas. This is a mil spec spot spec tube. So mil spec tubes, what that means is you can have up to four spots per tube in across zone two and three and as opposed to an aviation spot spec, which would just be the, the stricter only zone three, max three spots. But these are a mil spec spot spec, so they can have spots in zone two, so that is something to be aware of. Um, but overall, they're a super high performing system, and what's nice about these is uses uh, what's called a 1610 tube, which like we said, is the same tube that's in PBS 31 alphas. And one thing that's nicer about that is these tubes do come standard with a stricter halo, spec than most tubes. So most mil spec tubes out on the market and even aviation tubes are going to have a max of one halo. The 1610 tubes that come in 31s and the M914 alphas, these are actually going to have a maximum spec of 0.85 on the halo. So that is a stricter spec and it is, it is going to be a, um, a nicer halo value uh, on the maximum side. Now you can absolutely get lower than that with these tubes and you can absolutely get lower than that on other tubes but you really have to buy night vision off the minimum and maximum performance specs and the constraints of the system so if you're wanting a stricter halo value this is a good option overall these are great systems they're pretty cost effective they're very versatile they can be helmet mounted they can be handheld you can throw them in a pack they're very durable they don't where it, it's a monocular you don't have pods on a bridge which takes out failure points so Really, the PBS 14, it's a very strong choice for those looking to get into night vision, add capability to an existing kit, or just want a high-performing, good monocular. The M914 Alpha is a very good option. So we did say that we don't recommend using the bayonet-style mounting system or the skull crusher. So what do we recommend? So a brief overview of how we recommend if you are going to helmet mount these. We recommend a Wilcox G24 or other uh, Wilcox dovetail mount and a Wilcox dovetail J-arm. So to show you how this works, you have your mounting point for the J-arm. Those simply screw in. And then you have your dovetail mount right there. So then this would be on your helmet. You've got your PBS 14 securely mounted onto your uh, G24 and you're ready to go. One nice thing about this and one really important feature is one, you're not fighting for adjustability because with the USGI stuff, they're gonna be they're gonna be really, really sloppy in the mounting. So you're gonna always be fighting to really have it in front of your eye. Um, and the dovetail system, it's just a rock solid. You can see there's really no move in that. It's a rock solid system and the uh, Wilcox J arm can be moved from eye to eye with just the push of a button. So overall, Really simple system, but that is the L3 Harris M914 Alpha 2376 minimum FOM factory built L3 Harris PBS 14.